Thank you for watching today. As a follow on to an earlier video, I want to talk about a USB 2.5 gigabit network adapter. If you're interested in getting faster network performance from your laptop or your desktop, then stick around to watch the rest of this video. If you haven't already done so, then please subscribe and click on that notification icon so you'll be notified of new content. I recently did a video on a PCI Express 2.5 gigabit network adapter that I was actually pretty impressed with as a low cost alternative to upgrading your network performance without the need for new wiring. Um, as you probably already know, going to 10 gigabit requires some new wiring and these new 2.5 gigabit adapters allow you to do it over existing 5E or CAT6. I'll link to the post um, where I actually reviewed the PCI Express version, so if you want to take a look at it, if you'd rather have that, versus this USB device. The main reason I wanted to look at this device was um, I want to use it on my laptop and as well as a docking station. And periodically when I set up a new computer, it's nice to get the extra performance when you're downloading software, um, drivers, all these different things you know applications being a you know being that it's a USB device it's portable it's making it ideal for different situations so you can bounce it around from device to device I also wanted to see if it would achieve the same speeds as the PCI Express version which was actually pretty impressive there aren't very many of these brands to choose from so I selected the pluggable brand because they've been around for a long time they've been building USB devices and overall their quality and compatibility has been pretty good I'm not going to repeat all the things that were discussed in the first video and I encourage you to go take a look at it if you want some additional information. But I want to do I do want to restate a couple things that I think are important. For starters, for any of these 2.5 gigabit adapters to work, you will need to add or upgrade to a 10 gigabit switch or if you can find one, a 2.5 gigabit switch. Now I'd recommend going to 10 gigabit for two reasons. One is you'll be uh, kind of future proof so when you're ready to go 10 gig you'll be able to and the price difference between the two is pretty minor these 2.5 gig switches are hard to find and you get a premium for them it's actually easier to buy a 10 gigabit switch so I'd recommend getting that and getting ready for you know future if you do get a 10 gigabit switch and make sure it supports auto negotiation or, or negotiating down to different speeds such as one gigabit two and a half or five gig uh, most you know modern switches do it but you just need to make sure and if you get the kind of switch that uses an SFP plus transceiver the kind that you plug into the front um, like the one I'm showing here you need to make sure that the transceiver will also uh, auto negotiate a lot of these transceivers are locked in at 10 gigs, so when you attach it to something other than that, like a 2.5 gig adapter, they don't work very well. Your performance will actually be slower than having just a 1 gigabit connection. So you got to be a little bit careful about that. Other than that, you should be ready to go. There's not much to this adapter. As you can see, it's a traditional USB. It come, it's, a, it's actually a native USB-C device and they give you a C to A adapter so it's pretty universal and when it comes to the testing we're actually going to test it with both USB 3.0 and USB 3.1 Gen 2 to see if there's any difference in performance at all. One of the things that um, is important in any of these devices especially USB is that you be able to plug them right in and that they just come up and work without loading additional drivers especially on network adapters because if you're if that's your only adapter in a system and you can't download drivers you're kind of stuck so it's important that these just plug in and work and so we're going to be verifying that during the testing as well there's not much else to show on a USB device so why don't we just go ahead and and get right into the performance testing I'm going to be using the same files that I used on the PCI Express card review that I did um, the same systems, the same cabling, the same switches, the same everything. These files are basically made up of JPEGs, MP4s, and uncompressed MKV. So we got a nice cross-section of both small, medium, and large files um, that um, we'll be using to test. 
Um, both systems have NVMe drives, so performance of reading or writing should not be an issue. It should not be a limiter for any of these devices. And like as I mentioned before, we're going to run it against a USB 3.0 and 3.1. And then once we complete these tests, we'll compare them to the actual results that I got off of a 1 gig connection and a 10 gig connection, as well as compare it to the 2.5 gig PCI Express connection. So with all that said, um, let's start with the testing. Okay, the first thing I want to do is actually plug this into this computer. Um, this computer's never seen this device plugged in, so this will be the first time it's being attached to this computer. This is the one we're going to actually use for testing. So I'm going to start by actually plugging in the 3.1, which or the 3 uh, 3.0, which will be the USB-C with the adapter. We'll plug it into a standard USB-A port. Let's make sure it gets detected. Um, and shows up in the device manager like it's supposed to uh, without loading any additional drivers and then I'm going to move it take the adapter off and move it into the 3.1 and then we'll start our testing and I'll test it for both 3.1 and 3 so let's go ahead and plug that in so right out of the gate this thing's not being detected so it's actually um, it shows up as the device but it's not being instantly loaded with the, with the default drivers so I'm going to need to attach an alternate network connection to get the drivers loaded and hopefully they'll just load automatically. So as you can see the drivers instantly loaded once it was attached to some type of net alternate network connection. Which is a little disappointing but it's not the end of the world. So you'll have to attach with Wi-Fi or your 1 gig connection just for a few seconds. Now that we've got it detected, so I want to go ahead and move it to the USB 3, make sure it's still detected, and we'll start running our tests from the, the uh, 3.0 USB uh, using the adapter. All right, it looks like it stayed detected even with the uh, switching it over to the 3.0 port. So let's start with our testing from that point. So as you can see, I've started the file copy, which is approximately 47 gigs of mixed files. Just to clarify, this testing isn't really meant to be scientific, but it's rather to establish kind of a rough comparison between the different technologies and devices. Uh, I'm going to speed this thing up so you don't have to sit there and watch the progress bar, and we'll see how this looks at the end. So this is getting kind of close to the end. So far the performance has been pretty consistent. Once this finishes I'll test the same files using the USB 3.1 interface and let's see if there's any difference. We're now running the same file test using the 3.1 interface and when this completes we can compare the 3.1 and 3.0 interface as well as um, kind of compare them with the PCI Express version, the 1 gigabit, and the 10 gigabit network connections. All right, so we're nearing completion now. So as soon as this gets done, we'll put it all together and see what the results tell us. Okay, now that everything is done, as you can see from the chart, the USB versions of the 2.5 gigabit network adapters don't really suffer any performance penalty. Um, arguably, you can say they're a little faster than the PCI Express version, though there's um, some margin of error in the way that I'm testing. Anytime you're using a stopwatch or and file copies, you have an opportunity to, to have some variances. Looking at the overall performance curve, it's pretty clear though that the 2.5 gigabit is a pretty good value given that you can keep your existing cabling and get near three times the performance. 
Depending on your individual situation, upgrading to CAT 6A or CAT 7 can be pretty expensive. Here in, in Southern California, the average cost of a CAT 6A or CAT 7 drop is around $140 to $180 per drop. You factor in the extra cost of the 10 gigabit cards and it can get pretty expensive. Even if you're willing to pay for that, you most likely don't want to do that to every drop in your house. So using a 2.5 gigabit adapter kind of makes sense and it provides that nice performance boost to you know, other parts of your network where you're not going to go all the way to 10 gig. I currently have 6 10 gigabit devices in the house including some NAS units. Um, but I'll be adding some more of these two and a half gigabit adapters, um, giving my overall network a kind of a boost all the way across. I was a little disappointed that, um, and, but not really surprised that these drivers needed to be downloaded for the USB version. Uh, given that it's a USB device, I suspect most, if not all of these variations of these devices will be much the same. I didn't have that issue with the PCI Express version. It detected right away without the need for any downloading of any drivers. That said, I think this device as well as the PCI Express version have some real value if you're looking to upgrade a portion of your network without replacing existing cabling. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please throw it a like. Feel free to post any questions or comments below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notification icon so you'll be notified of new content. And we'll see you on the next video.